All right, come on and give God a praise offering, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. How many people know we serve an awesome God? Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Father, we bless you and we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, our teacher on today. Now, Lord God, we yield. Teach us in Jesus' name. Come on and give God a praise offering. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. We, we're in our Jesus series, and this is lesson six, lesson number six. And uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to study as Jesus provide uh, for us uh, prayer and faith uh, and teaching as he uh, communicates to his disciples on the importance of prayer. Amen. And that his focus has always been that he is in touch with Father God. Amen. Amen. And so he, he is teaching us that this is how I communicate with God. This is how you, y'all real high, huh? This is how you need to communicate with God. I don't know. It went out today. Amen. Proverbs 15 and 29 said, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. And I don't care how you say you love God and you love if you haven't come by the way of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. If Jesus hasn't, if you haven't accepted him as your savior. Come on, somebody. Amen. You can pray all you want to. But according to the scripture, come on, somebody. Amen. The connection is, number one, that Jesus is your personal Savior. Amen. And that God is your Father. And that you are living according to his will, which is his word. Amen. In the New Testament, there are over a hundred promises made to believers. And by prayer and faith, we apprehend each one of them. How do we apprehend them? By prayer and by faith. Amen. And so I decided to give you some little quotes that um, that are really unique from some of the founding fathers, some of the um, historians that had faith and had a track record of faith. Amen. It's something when you can follow someone's track record of faith. That's why we can follow Jesus because he had a track record here on the earth. Amen. And so Paul Little says the Christian's faith is strengthened as he keeps the promises of God before him and considers not the difficulties in the way of things promised, but character and resources of God who has made the promise. Come on, somebody. Amen. My focus is not on the difficulties in the way every promise will have a difficulty oh this is good right here amen there was the promised land amen and God said you know what I want you to see what I promised amen oh this is good right here go and investigate what I have promised amen but then all that the 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 ten spies could see were the difficulties all they could see was that they were no match for the people who were on the land. Oh, oh my God, this is good. Amen. But God promised the land to you. Amen. So there were squatters in your promise. And every now and then you're going to find out there is some squatters in your promise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. But you got to be willing to stand tall and say, in spite of the difficulties, come on, God have promised this to me. Amen. John Calvin, who's one of my favorites, 
I, amen. I, I like reading history. Okay. The, he said, the main hinge on which faith turns is this. We must not imagine that the Lord's promises are true objectively, but not in our experience. We must make them ours by embracing them in our hearts. Where do they go? In our hearts. Amen. Because life will make you say God a liar. Amen. It's some scriptures that even look like they conflict each other. Oh, uh, this is good. Amen. William Tyndale said, where no promise of God is, there can be no faith, nor justifying, nor forgiveness of sins. For it is more than madness to look for anything of God save that he hath promised. Oh, this is good. Amen. And so uh, Herbert Locker says, a promise each day keeps doubt away. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Amen. Now, I, at next week, I'm going to to list a lot of the promises out of the New Testament. We 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 quote many of the Old Testament promises, and and we do quote some of the New Testament promises. But there are a lot of promises for which God wants us as the New Testament church to stand on. Amen. Say, this is the day. Amen. Thomas Watson say, faith holds the promise in one hand and Christ in the other. And the scriptures say, all the promises in Christ, they are yea and they are amen. Amen. Henry Barclay Sweet, he said, those make the best progress in religion who fell fast by the faith once for all delivered to the saints and not for those who drift away from their moorings rooted upon a sea of doubt come on amen in other way in other words you got to be consistent how do you apprehend the promises of God through a consistent lifestyle Amen. You can't be one way over here, another way over here. Amen. And all these inconsistencies in your life. God is constantly training you through lessons, life lessons and teaching you. Come on. Amen. And so what? He's bringing you in alignment, bringing your character in alignment so that what? You are the justified of Christ. Amen. And and if you live in an inconsistent lifestyle, then you saying God gonna do something and it look like you scared over here amen a double minded man is unstable in all his what ways amen John Gresham Mack says our deepest comfort is found not in the signs of the times but in the great and precious promises of God so I don't care what the star the tribune New York Times I don't care what they saying how I look down here come on somebody amen I am not governed by what is going on outside of us come on amen so look so look, amen, if, if things are going wrong all around you and God left you here, he left you here so you can change it. Why? Because you've been given the authority. You've been given the power. He said, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you. Come on, somebody. Amen. John Piper said, the heart that rests in God's promises cannot remain guilty, fearful, and greedy. Amen. Peter Marshall said, no one yet has ever set out to test God's promises fairly, thoroughly, and humbly, and had to report that God's promises don't work. Amen. If you say God is lying, you the liar. Amen. Because all the promises of God are true. Amen. We must, Matthew Henry say, depend upon the performance of the promise when all the ways leading up to it are shut up. Amen. Jesus said it this way, in this world, you're going to have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Say, I am an overcomer. 
Messiah. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's my promise. Amen. Not only it is my promise, it's my grace. Oh, uh, come on, somebody. Amen. So James Hudson Taylor said, there's a living God. He has spoken in the Bible. He means what he says and will do all he has promised. Amen. Peter Marshall says, the promises of scripture are not more pious hopes or sanctified guesses. They are more than sentimental words to be printed or on decorated cards for Sunday school children. They are eternal verities. They are true. There is no perhaps about them. Amen. See, you can just tell the devil, devil, there's no perhaps about him. Amen. And if God said it to me, if he spoke it to me, come on, somebody. If I live in the upright, Amen. If I do his will, if I live in the covenant, come on. He said no good thing will he withhold from those who walk. Oh, uh, oh this is good right here. See, you cannot live any kind of way and get a promise. Amen. Who walk upright before me. Amen. J Joni Eckerson Tata said, just think every promise God has ever made finds its fulfillment in Jesus. J.I. Packer says, the stars may fall, but God's promises will stand and be fulfilled. Amen. So from each book, there are about over a hundred and something promises in the New Testament alone. Over a hundred. Amen. And I got this out of AMG's Encyclopedia of Bible Facts. I gave you the information, and the book costs $35.99. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So here, uh, and, and I'm going to uh, copy the list uh, from um, that book on next week. All right, and, and number one, in St. Luke 11 chapter, let's turn there. Was that good? Amen. How many people just holding on to your lessons so you can hold on? Amen. No sense of getting the answer, and then when you need the answer, you can't find it. Man, all the study been done for you. Amen. You just, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Amen. You have to hide the word. Amen. Because surely the devil will come and want to take it away from you. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. Well, we know that John's disciples were praying men as was John. However, history does not afford us to uh, know all of those things, save we look with uh, uh, Philo and uh, Josephus, if you really want to good dig deep. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, uh, and so uh, we understand that because when we get to the New Testament of the book of Acts, uh, they run in, in, in Corinthians, Paul runs into John's disciples whom he has sent out. And they ask the question, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Amen. And here we have John's disciples out there teaching and preaching of the coming of Christ, not knowing that Christ had come and gone and is about to come again. Oh, this is good right here. Amen. So here they become uh, fulfilled with the Holy Ghost and with the fullness of Christ. Amen. And so here Jesus is looking and, and standing with his disciples and he said unto them, when ye pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven. 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. So here we are, Jesus is teaching and, and they could sense the closeness that Jesus Jesus had with the father and they could sense that John had something different with God come on that was different for all of them and the different uh, relationships with the rabbis and the priests amen so they wanted that same relationship how many people know you can incite people to want to have the same relationship you have with God how you can believe God in stressful times and not break a sweat and not be looking like you injured but you know that God God is going to come through for you. Don't know how, but I know that he hears and he answers prayers. Amen. So Jesus teaches him really what the meaning of the Lord's prayer is. Amen. It's a little different twist than Matthew 6. Amen. The first thing he teaches is the reverence of the name of God because the Judea, uh, the, the people of Israel thought God was so holy they couldn't even say his name they couldn't even write his name so they write g dash d amen they couldn't it was so sacred they didn't even want to handle his name amen and they did that that it was he now he adds a personal attachment to god's name amen to his character and his nature even out of who he is even out of a god that destroyed a god that raised up come on somebody a god that could create storms a god that create peace Come on. He began to teach him. He says, uh, uh, now we see God as father. Amen. He, we see now there's a tender side to God. Amen. There's a side to God that wants us close. Oh, this is good. Amen. We see God now is looking to us as his children. Amen. And so he says, you know, he, uh, uh, when we look at hallowed be thy name, we're saying, may your name be kept holy. Uh-huh. Amen. That, that, that understanding the kingdom come is talking about God's reign. Moffat said that God's kingdom is being restored. That God is acknowledged as king and, and his rule is established among his people. Oh, this is good right here. Amen. So we understand that and we look and we say, God, your will be done in heaven. We we have to note that when God's people are obedient to him and our wills are submitted to him, that his kingdom is revealed. Oh, y'all, come on. Amen. Why? Because we are the children of God. And when, when God's words are coming out of your mouth, they're not coming from somebody that just reads scripture like it's a book. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on. They're coming from somebody that has an experience with God, that has God in their life, that, that are depending upon God. God, no other help I know. Amen. God, if you don't do it, I, I just can't trust that man will handle me like you. David said, Lord, I don't want man to handle me. I done messed up, but I let you deal with me. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because man will, uh, uh, has a habit of not being fair. <laughs> Amen. When we talk about the kingdom coming to earth, when we walk and talk as kingdom minded people, what we need to understand is that the kingdom is being revealed in the earth, that God has given us a Authority to carry his glory that he's given us authority to have his anointing amen it ain't no mere people that get this 
uh, all y'all want him is folk who have died to themselves. And it's folk who say, God, you first. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all, come on. Amen. It's folk who say, you know what? I, by this word, I'm going to live. Amen. Who pattern themselves after the, the, the word of God that is identified for the believer. Amen. So he says here, give us this day. Give us day by day. Give us day by day. This is really good. Mm. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Amen. When you when I looked at that, I, I, I really looked at that. Amen. That when you are praying in the day, you're not only praying in this day, but you praying in your next day. That this is not just for today, but this is also you praying God have given you authority to handle your tomorrow. Oh, y'all, oh, y'all, come on, amen. That's why if you really depending on him, amen, then he is already giving me the authority to stand in my next day and declare that this day he's going to give me my daily bread for this day. Amen. So I was like, look, look, look at here, look at here. This is not, this is not just my need for today. This is my need for tomorrow too, because tomorrow will be my today. Oh, y'all won't help me. Amen. And the more that I'm stepping in and keeping in with God, the more that I'm standing in my todays. Oh, yeah. That's how, it, that's how stuff keep coming to you. That's why your need for tomorrow is already met. Y'all, why? Because you prayed for your need for tomorrow today. Oh, y'all won't help me. Amen. That's why your need for today was met because you prayed for your need for today, yesterday. Oh, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We look at daily bread like they did as manna, but manna could only be handled for the day. Oh, uh, y'all won't have me. It was no more manna for the, until the next day came. But because you got the bread of life on the inside of you. Oh, y'all won't have me. Oh, uh, y'all won't have me. Amen. Jesus said, I am. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. I am the bread of life. Because I have the bread of life on the inside of me, I get to eat my glory for today and for the next day and for the next day. Y'all, yeah, why? Because by his word, every word is established to the believer. To them who believe. I ain't trying to convince you to believe. You believe if you want to. Oh, yeah. Believe. <laughs> Amen. You believe if you want to. This thing is personal. What I believe in for, maybe you cannot have, you don't have the faith to believe it. Y'all won't have me because he tells uh, the man that wants to be healed, he said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. Oh, y'all won't have me. Amen. But we get faith mixed up. Amen. Because we try to classify faith by dreams. By how we want to see things. And sometimes your daily bread don't look like your dream. All, all this. I'm about to run down. Hey Amen. How many people know? And this is why you have to encourage yourself and can't get discouraged because it don't look like what you thought you was going. You got to be grateful. For what he did for you today, come on, amen, even though it don't look like. I don't even deserve that, but thank you. Come on, somebody, thank you for giving it to me anyway. Amen, it wasn't by my design, because you know what I'm fit for. 
Amen. It's some stuff you just ain't fit for. It's some stuff you haven't died for yet. It's some stuff you haven't qualified for. It's some stuff you don't have the character for. Am I preaching right right here? Amen. Amen. I'm talking about our daily bread. Amen. So that you can learn how to be satisfied in your day. Stop walking around moping and looking hopeless and looking like God ain't going to do nothing. And he have, God said, Peter, uh, J David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. David said, I've never. Now, he was a king. Oh, y'all won't help me. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither his seed begging bread. Say it is so. Amen. I told you, I told you, one of the writers said, it ain't by greed. Amen. If someone gives you a gift, and you look at the gift, you say, I know they didn't give me this. Well, every time God answers your prayer, he's giving you a gift. And sometimes we can be so ungrateful. And come on, sometimes you could just be so ungrateful for what God is doing that you can think you got faith, but that, that, that heart, amen, is not grateful because it has no humility. Uh, say, oh, y'all won't help me. Amen. It's selfish. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. y'all. Sidebar. <laughs> I'm studying the spirit of selfishness. It's so deep, I don't know when I'm going to teach that. People, people don't have no idea how selfish and self-serving that they are. Then they have the nerve to get married. Now, I, I'm teaching right here. And, 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 and I'm, I'm doing the study. I'm giving me some statistics, I'm telling you. Because I'm convinced that the plight of marriages is because of selfishness. Amen. And a selfish person, you can't serve them enough. You can be skin and bone. You can give them every penny, every dollar, every dime. You can let them shop on, on Wall Street, uh, 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 downtown, come on, and still, it will not be enough. Why? Because selfishness, self-serving people have a love a uh, warped perception of what love is. Uh -huh, amen. That's why God can't satisfy him. Uh, never mind a man or a woman. Oh, I'm preaching right. I'm preaching. Okay, I'm preaching right, right here. Amen. Amen. Yeah. When I come out, I'm come out strong. <laughs> Woo! And forgive us our sins. For we also. Now, this is what gets us in trouble right here with our prayers. Forgive everyone that is indebted. In other words, we recognize, I believe this is what it's saying. Now, this is just me. I believe that one who easily forgives recognizes that they've been saved by God's love and his grace. And we recognize that even when Jesus was walking around 
with the disciples, he recognized their frailty in their humanity. Oh, is is this good? And then, and and we see the patience that God has with our ignorance. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. Amen. And that the knowledge is that we are yet still prone to failure. I know you perfect, but um, I'm just talking about those of us that know. Amen. So I believe that one who forgives consciously prays and, and looking at their own frailties know that I have no right to hold a grudge. When I look at my mistakes and how God has not put them on CNN, YouTube, Put them in the newspaper. I'm, I'm talking to all of us. When we look at, y'all, come on, amen, that God, even though we have offended him, still loves us. That's good right there. Say, that's good right there. Amen. But, but and is merciful and continues to love, love us unconditionally. And so we understand that when we ask God to forgive us, we must have already forgiven those who've hurt us. I'm going to get you free right here. I'm going to anybody that's holding on to an art, to deep-seated hurts, to soulish areas that have been wounded. Come on, amen. Uh, uh, we have to understand that we have to have already forgiven them when we enter into prayer. That's why we just didn't start talking about prayer because I believe that one of the basis of having clean prayer, real prayer, is that your soul is free from the torment of unforgiveness. Say, so that's good right there. Amen. You will see your prayer go up 10 notches if you speak out of a pure heart. Amen. Jesus, uh, God said uh, he won't despise. Amen. In Matthew 18, let's turn there. I'm not going to keep y'all lost. See y'all hot. Amen. Matthew 18, verse 21. This is really good. Matthew 18. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft? Shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Jesus saith unto him, I say not uh, to thee, unto thee, uh, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. In other words, he was saying, you forgive him as many times as necessary. Amen. And I'm going to say as many times as he has necessarily forgiven you. <laughs> Amen. Say it's necessary. Amen. So this I called a conclusion or a summation of forgiveness. When we look at the verses 24 through 34, I'm not going to take you through that. But it says uh, in verse 10 where he demonstrates the exchange of forgiveness and talks about the king who acts to be Ask the master for, uh, ask the gentleman, ask the master for patience. Come on. Amen. While he, uh, get his debt together. Amen. And, and he's forgiven the debt. Then turns around and see three folks that owe him. And say, <laughs> amen. Jesus call him wicked. Amen. So a person with unforgiveness is wicked. I didn't say it. Read this in your Bible. He said you wicked. 
Because how can you not forgive and I'm forgiving you every day? Amen. How many people know about 10 times during a day, even if you don't ask for, for forgiveness, he don't forgive you for something? Oh, y'all won't help me. I know you're with your proud self. I know you're just perfect. Amen. Amen. But, but, but here, here, uh, what, this is what I, I feel we're saying here, that we must guard our hearts and not allow them to become hardened when we face various oppositions. And, and, and in that summary, and, and in verse uh, 35, he says, So likewise shall your, my heavenly Father do also unto you. If you don't forgive, if from your hearts for, if you forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses, forgiveness cannot be just something we say out of our mouth and not mean it with a genuine spirit. Amen. Forgiveness means you have completely pardoned and no longer is that person considered or even treated guilty. If you forgive, say it's over. All right, moving forward. So we must keep our channel of grace open in our lives. So this lets me know that grace will stop. Let us get some lessons about hate. Let us get some lessons about unforgiveness. Grace will stop and give you time to kick that pride right out of you. Because it's pride that holds on to grudges. Oh, this is good. Amen. And, and I don't know if you forgive. And all I know is what you say. Amen. Because the Bible says man looks at the outward appearance. But God looks at the heart. I'm convinced that some people could be he totally healed if they let go of some grievances if they let go come on amen the bible says not that that person is a sinner but that that person sin is forgiven when the elders pray the prayer of faith isn't that what the word of god says amen so if we allow ourselves to stay in a certain place spiritually i'm talking about because you can have everything but not spiritually not have nothing Amen. So we must teach, we must preach out of a spirit of forgiveness. Hallelujah. Amen. And let God handle the business. You can't handle people. Amen. That's not your job. Amen. It's your job to love your brethren. It's your job to restore those that have fallen. Amen. Because we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, man, you ain't even got to worry about a minute. What's my ministry? <laughs> Every one of us have a ministry, and it's the same ministry with the same identity that we have been given the ministry of reckon what? Amen. It's not my job to make you repent. I, amen the very one amen paul said thou that teaches one not to steal the i steal you that get and 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 call people and and talk about uh uh who should be set down and all these uh crazy what about the ministry of reconciliation what about come on what about not worrying about when they repent and how they repent Amen. The Bible say confess your faults one to another. Amen. Amen. Not to you. We have to. If we're going to pray real. Amen. We must pray out of a forgiving spirit. Say you got to pray. See if people. 
would pray in a, a forgiving spirit, they would pray humbly. They would pray knowing, God, I don't even have a right to ask you this. I don't even have a right to stand up here and tell you nothing, ask you, but God, because you've forgiven me. Come on, somebody. Amen. I cannot afford to have a grudge. I cannot afford to hate nobody. Come on, because you don't hate me. Because God so loved the world, not, not the, the saints. He so loved us that while we was yet sinners, he died for the ungodly. That ought to humble us right there. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times. God is able, though, to keep us from falling. Come on, give God a hand clap. Come on, I give him a hand clap. 